uh, we've been gaining ground actually on we find ourselves leading the press in America, the American Islamic societies and so on, they really aren't yet fully involved with Kashmir. So I began, uh, this was uh, June 4th, Kashmir Valley of Death uh, lecture and film at uh, the Islamic Circle of North America, which we now have a tap in to them, I'm trying to get Kashmir in front of their eyes uh, to where Kashmir is not just a project, but Kashmir is something they hear about all the time and, and begin to uh, formulate Hopefully, I'd like to see them guide them into PAC and other organizations, Pakistan American Congress and others, who are ready and have the ability to channel their their uh, support uh, in, into some meaningful change. The other thing we wanted to share with you on the book, um, my book, we're getting an interesting response from the Indians on my book. The English I was just going to ask that question. I thought you... <laughs> what, is, what, what is their reaction and response? First of all, um, I haven't received any death threats recently. I think I put an end to that because I've been saying on the university campuses to the Indian students who attend when they behave, now every now and then I have to uh, uh, dress them down. And they come and they start shouting and in the audience and I say, no, this is not New Delhi, this is America. <laughs> You'll be quiet and I will speak. If you don't want to be quiet, you're not going to, you, this is not a shout down. You're not the BJP, and we're not just a few uh, minorities. You're the minority. You're in America. You're supposed to be students. Learn civilization here. Be civilized. You'll be, if he was in the audience when I was just really castigating them. They asked like any uh, fools, so I treat them. And uh, so they were quiet, uh, finally. And I told them, if indeed, and, and of course the first statement is, they're still trying and look for a way to associate me as a paid agent of Pakistan. And there's nothing to find. And this is the beauty and the wonderful guidance of Allah that when we began this project, it was just myself before I ever met Dr. Arvain, before I met anyone. I determined to go to the valley just as an American who cared to see the truth about Kashmir. I had already come back when we met, and he, he tells that story. And that's the beautiful part of this, is that still to this day, and uh, the only there is no, no link to anything. So they're frustrated, and I have some friends who are Indians who are giving me uh, little insights of what the planning that's actually on. My name is on the list in uh, Delhi about... Your name is being internationalized. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, absolutely right. And uh, they're trying to figure out a strategy to, to, to somehow stop this. They can't harm my credibility. They've, they've tried to look for ways. There's no way. So now... They're figuring that uh, the intimidation did not work, the threats of death, because I just told the uh, chancellor of the university. Yes, we friends. Yeah, I think. You know, you know like that's a, sorry uh, for interruption. Please. There's a famous, uh, 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 what, you, what would you like to call it, <laughs> uh, sort of inscription or uh, a description uh, in one of their uh, holy books. Mm -hmm. You befriend him, mm -hmm. embrace him, mm -hmm. stab him in the back, and cry over the dead body. <laughs> that is the religious, yeah. uh, you know, um, yes, doctrine uh, preached by them, inviting him. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm very wary of them, of course, and uh, the interesting thing is that uh, when I say publicly, when they say, we, we, we cured Punjab, and now we will, we will do the same in Kashmir. I say, no, number one, Kashmiris are not Punjabis. Yeah. <laughs> That's number one. Number two, if you will check and ask about the Sikhs that I know, in Punjab is just resting. Yes. You've done nothing but give them, just they're taking a breathing, it, they're catching a, their breath. It's a lull before the start. That's, That's what right. I said. That's I said, you, you're dealing with the symptoms up here, the cause is still there. Yes, That's right. And uh, then thirdly, I say, if indeed, and he's heard me say this many times, if indeed I am assassinated by, and Allah permits it, I said, it will be a wonderful thing because my book will then become the best seller <laughs> in the world and you will have defeated your own purpose yes, and more Americans and all the people of the world will say, why was this American killed, murdered? Let's read his book. So I really am egging them and needling them, you know, to make, and they're doing foolish things. 
And if I get any threats, uh, I, I kind of rejoice because then I go on television on an interview or a talk show, and they say, isn't it dangerous, Mr. Baker, these American interviewers? I say, well, yes, it can be. I mean, I get threats of death from, I suppose, Indian sympathizers, and that goes out over the air. And Americans don't take kindly to Americans being threatened for free speech and writing the truth. And uh, so, so that's the status. And this is a wonderful letter. I'm going to have uh, Tariq make a copy. Trinity Anantararmia is a uh, PhD at Utah State University in our country. I had a program there on the Middle East. I brought up Kashmir. He's an Indian Hindu. And he is such a wonderful young man. In fact, I sent him two copies of my book, and, it, and he presented one to the library. He's one of the honest. Indian young men. But they have many good people. They're wonderful, and they're the best allies we can find on this subject. Because in the, in the West, they'll say, no, it's not just Pakistan. When you bring an Indian scholar or, or an Indian on a program with me, it lends so much more power because here's an Indian uh, contradicting his own government. And this young man, I'll let you make a copy of this, and he said, please, use anything. But basically, I wanted you to know, he said, I finished reading your splendid book on Kashmir. It is an eye-opener to many of us Indians who are unaware of the widespread atrocities occurring in this region. I donated my copy of the book to the Utah State Merrill Library. The librarian who received the book was impressed by the subject matter and wanted to know more. We spent a good 20 minutes discussing the problems of the Indian subcontinent and the consequences to world peace from nuclear capabilities of both India and Pakistan. He concluded, your book will certainly educate the general American public on this tragic situation and deeply appreciated the gift to the library. Then he says, I also wrote my congressman, James Hansen, urging him to vote, not to vote for any assistance to the Indian government. This is amazing from an Indian PhD until the human rights situation in Kashmir has been addressed. I'm awaiting his reply. When this response comes, I'll send you a photocopy of the letter. And finally, he says, uh, this is very revealing. I was talking a few days ago to a Kashmiri pandit who is a postdoctoral fellow in chemistry department here. He had heard of your video on Kashmir presentation when you were here. And he said, I wish I had been there. He told me he would have embarrassed you and would have debunked what you had to say about the widespread atrocities being committed by Indian troops. I suggested to him, knowing you, that he, you would gladly debate him in public. And he replied quickly, well, I'm returning to John Moo, and I will not have time to do so. <laughs> How convenient. If he claims, and this is the revealing part, this thinking young Indian, if he claims he is a Hindu refugee, why is he going back to Kashmir for a comfortable teaching position at the university? It certainly makes you wonder about the hidden agenda of these Kashmiri Hindus who claim they've been expelled from their homes by Muslims but are free and are still returning to Kashmir, in and out. This, and he says, please keep in touch. Hopefully we'll arrange a new program on Kashmir for you on this controversial issue here which must be discussed. Uh, your friend, Trinity, uh, I just think this is powerful. And this is the result, one little result, of one man reading this book, knowing me, and then the other results, for example, uh, I did receive a personal letter from Al Gore, Vice President of the United States. As you know, most of you may not, but I quote him in the book, his Senate resolution passed in 92 when he was a senator. Very strong language about the atrocities and human rights abuses in Kashmir and the Valley, calling upon an international Red Cross immediately access and so on, the things we all have advocated. And so I reminded him by letter before I sent him the book, I actually had it delivered to him, hand delivered, in the White House. I said, you know, you said this here when you're senator. Now that you've simply got a new title, the substance of your statement cannot change. Now, in fact, you are in a position to implement this thing. So please, Mr. Vice President, why not follow up on your statement, which is in the book word for word? He wrote back and said, thank you for sending me the book, your support, encouragement, and, and what I said about him in the book. I appreciate you remembering me this way. And he talks about, but he doesn't mention Kashmir. You see, they've been bitten very hard by Ghulam Nabi Phi taking the letter from Clinton. If you remember, President Clinton kind of said, dear Ghulam, we share this problem and the concern for Kashmir, and not Phi facts that all over the world. Mm -hmm. and, that, uh, that, and that was very unbecoming. You know, I think that's what's happened, because I think the response, even though Phi wanted to make good use of it, I think if uh, Clinton may have felt betrayed or somebody, 
But the point is, I think that's why Gore is being very careful. Now, I'm following up with a letter asking for a personal audience, which I've had before with vice presidents, and I know how to do that, and uh, access to the, and then one-on-one, -on -one, as we're talking, I'm going to try to ask the vice president of the United States, please, uh, you're a decent man. That's why I said that in the book. Will you, on behalf of these people, please uh, move forward, take the next step? And that, that is my agenda. And then finally, um, yes, the press conference after you left, we really gave it to Raul. Uh, that was such a perfect timing. You were out. Raul came. That is Nate's plan. Yes, that, 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 <laughs> yeah, I know. Everything changed, and just in time for our launching of the book on Kashmir, my book in English, in Washington, and the following week, Raul was coming. And we prepared hot sand for him to walk with his feet. He put his shoes on because they were so hot. And uh, he, uh, we had my friend Helen Thomas. I've known on the Palestinian issue many years. She's the senior White House correspondent for all the news networks. She's been there the longest, so she gets to ask her question first. That's seniority of Clinton and Raul after they came out to meet the press in the White House. And we've given Helen a book. I made a call to her and had Trish follow up with her. And that's how it happened. And uh, Trish met her through me, and that's great, because she's tr this, this woman is a Lebanese Arab. And she has spoken up. Yes, Helen Thomas is Lebanese Arab, born in Beirut. And she's been very sympathetic to the, the Arab and the Muslim cause. She being a Christian, but very sympathetic. And so what happened? She brought up the question to Raoul. I don't know if you saw it on the press conference. Probably not. But she said, uh, well, uh, Prime Minister Raoul, uh, is it true that Indian occupation forces, according to all the reports of an American eyewitness, she had my book there. She'd read it. And she said, and not only that, but Amnesty International, Human Rights, Asia Watch, she named the groups. Is it true that these troops that are, are, are carrying out these atrocities against innocent civilian populations in the Valley of Kashmir? Boy, you could hear a pin drop. It was so quiet. And uh, he looked at her, and he, he didn't know what to say. Because he knew if he said absolutely not, or he would get into other further questions. So he looked at her, and he just said, no. That was his one-word answer. No. It's not true. No. And uh, immediately, I dispatched this to all the press, on all, faxed it to all the major press, same day, May 24th. Indian imp prime minister's denial of human rights violations in Kashmir refuted by American eyewitness to atrocities. And basically, I just said this. Uh, Rao's denial came in a joint press conference with President Clinton. William Baker, American professor and lecturer who visited the Valley, etc. Quote, Prime Minister Rao's one-word denial is a display of arrogant disdain for cherished human rights and values upon which America was founded, Baker said. He invited Rao to accompany him to India-occupied Kashmir and introduce him to the surviving family members of victims of killing, executions, torture, organ removal, and kidnappings. I also said, I don't know when the last time Prime Minister Rao's been to the Valley, but I'll be glad to take a personal tour. And I'll introduce him to surviving victims, and I'll show him some graves of his soldiers' executions. And this, this went uh, to the major the same day. So we, we really pinned him. Uh, he, he really wasn't a successful trip. It really was not. And Clinton then, once this subject was broached, he, when his next session of questions, said, we have continued discussion on differences. Human rights, he mentioned Kashmir. So, you see, I think we opened the door with that question, so he could say that. And I really still believe Bill Clinton and Al Gore, Vice President, want to do these things for Kashmir. But we have to give them almost the excuse and the mandate, almost, yes. to do so. So, so our strategy uh, has been going, and uh, I'm going to let Dr. Uh, Ryan uh, say anything he wishes now. The, uh, uh, we got the facts uh, from Khalidassan, your letter that was sent to the President Clinton. The timing was such that we made uh, a little fact, which was re, uh, re typeset and we mailed it to all the members of House and Senate. And that way, because the issue was hot, and the book was launched, it was in the news, press, Rao had been there. This is your letter. 
uh, when you were leaving, you said when you started by saying I, I'm visiting your soil and all. So uh, this was basically I just wanted to show you. And a thousand copies are made, and I just brought few for you. The other thing that happened, we had a little window of opportunity. We had now visited Boston. He stayed at a Four Seasons Hotel where most of the dignitaries stayed. And there, the advance team from New York uh, had given instructions to the general manager of the hotel that we will not, uh, only whites should serve him, only whites should serve him because of security reasons. And as a result of that, two blacks who were bell boys lost uh, in a total amount $175 in chips. And this issue came up in the press. And this gave us a God-given opportunity. So we immediately got, remember that uh, black congressman from Missouri that came for lunch? We. We and his uh, staff were uh, Sami Apriji. And we had Sami Apriji call all 33 members of Congress, and their staffers called the Indian Embassy, and you would, a 30-second phone call, there were six, seven pages of facts that they said, no, no, this is not true, uh, you know, uh, we are doing this, but we put them on the defensive. In the end, the hotel, you know, everybody apologized. The hotel paid $75,000 uh, in, uh, in damages to the Boston Human Rights Commission. So, and this created Wonderful. all the negative thing in Indian press saying that this was a disaster. Uh, you know, the Kashmir was discussed in the White House. And uh, so, wow. Well, <coughs> Mr. Speaker, good to see you. Yeah, pleasure. Welcome home. Yeah, it's good to be here. Nice nice to be here. Once again. Wonderful to be home. My other home. <laughs> so, uh, so well, uh, I think this was the first time where, you know, rather than reacting to the situation, we were kind of looking for opportunities and we were planting. Actually, the day before uh, the press conference, uh, the inner circle of uh, Pakistani-American Congress, we said our question will be the first question asked. And because we were not sure even the K word, the Kashmir word, will be even uttered in the White House. Yes. And we wanted to be sure that somebody should ask that question. And when Helen Thomas said, you know, it is guaranteed, I'll ask, the, I'll say the Kashmir word in the White House. Uh, and then a uh, lot of people were skeptical whether this will really happen, but we thank Allah that it, uh, you know, uh, it worked out, and she asked the question, and nevertheless, so so much, uh, so much for that. The uh, one of uh, uh, in the time frame from May, June until um, September, October, when this issue will be discussed at the UN, one of the things that you had instructed me was to to keep the momentum up and give an international uh, to internationalize the issue was basically uh, in this window uh, of time frame, three, four months. And then we had some meetings, Baker went with me, and we met with the Evolution of Human Rights Foundation, which is the group. Uh, they had issued a report, some of you are familiar, uh, that report was quite favorable that they issued in Geneva. I think uh, Mr. was there, and Ambassador Blackwell read the report. It was favorable, and what they said, uh, we like basically that they have members. Uh, this has nothing to do with American Congress. Uh, the name uh, may be confusing, but it says, it, it deals with, it's an NGO, Washington-based, Human Rights Foundation. Congressional is that they work with the Congresses or parliaments of various countries. Not they have it belongs to the Congress. Yes, right. Congress. So they have 115 countries with 1,000 parliamentary people as members. 115 countries. So when we saw this and we met with David Phillips, the president, he sent me this confidential memo that I was in fact to that. Basically, uh, his suggestion was to internationalize this issue. We should have an organization. Uh, their organization sponsor a conference on Kashmir. Initially, he thought Washington, but then, uh, then it was his suggestion that this be in London. And then eventually, it evolved the 11th of July being the World Action Day of Kashmir, uh, and that was basically two British parliamentarians, uh, uh, Roger Godsev and uh, Lord Avery, and. Uh, and he had targeted nine additional European countries. And six out of the nine European countries sent in a parliamentary delegation, which, uh, and then, uh, which conducted hearings. I gave a testimony uh, as a member of the Physicians for Human Rights, and William Baker gave his eyewitness account. Uh, and uh, subsequent to that, uh, some of these, this was the rightist party, the leftist party, the Green Party. Uh, some, one person was the vice president of the National Assembly uh, of, uh, Slovenia, uh, three of the six uh, were ladies. And uh, they they were generally moved, especially by uh, Professor Baker's testimony and his eyewitness account. He autographed books for everybody. 
Uh, and the next morning at the House of Commons, the resolution that this issue, the Kashmir issue, must be discussed at the UN and you know, the Goodwill Mission and those, those language was um, uh, was reasonably satisfactory to us and it's here for the record. This is the original copy from the House of Commons. Thank you. And uh, the same day, in 25 countries, and it's listed here, including U.S., 25 countries on the 11th of uh, July, this draft resolution was introduced in 25 parliaments that day. And uh, it would be that in this, within this month, almost in all 115 countries, uh, in the parliaments of these countries, uh, uh, through the members who are the members of this foundation, they will introduce in their parliaments. And so that when we come to UN in September and October, uh, some sort of a debate, discussion, media events in various countries uh, would bring in this awareness of this issue to the international forum. We hope uh, that most of these resolutions, if they are passed in various assemblies, they will be binding. Some of them are non-binding, but nevertheless, they are the sense of the parliament resolutions. They do carry some weight. Uh, and we will, we will have a, a dinner briefing for the heads of the missions at the UN in the last week of September, just before the General Assembly session. So that now we bring again people like Professor Baker, Ambassador to lobby, Baker, personally. To lobby personally, to personally. give them a briefing saying that this issue is going to be discussed. We discussed in great detail this morning with Mr. Sheikh this morning. And he, uh, he, he, he said that, uh, uh, you know, that for doing an international campaign that we couldn't have chosen a better vehicle than this because it has all the necessary so all the necessary ring to it, it has the necessary cover to it, it has the necessary package to it. Is there anything anything that we can contribute to this uh, the I, I think I have talked to Tariq yeah, fine. You know, about this and then but that would be very essential to follow it up, you see. Yes. Whatever the input we can uh, afford. Yes. We we if they they are in the process now of uh, uh, of uh, of uh, you know distributing to all their members, 1,000 members, 115 countries, but it was uh, heartwarming that at least through the effort of this foundation uh, and their major countries. If, if we get their addresses, we can also address directly these 1,000 yes. members. Yes, I have. Yes, send them some briefings. Send them some briefings saying yes, that that's right. that this would be the, very appropriate. Yes, um, and I think it would be helpful. So uh, basically, uh, the uh, then. Uh, and how about this uh, uh, September uh, UN meeting and yes. three things and things like that? Yes. Is there anything that you would, it is, you it would will suggest that we can do something? It's probably like better that right now we keep it. As soon as I go back, we're going back yeah. on the 22nd. Yeah, on the 23rd and 24th, we have meeting, right? there is a leadership meeting in Chicago, the time that was held in Washington, uh, that we were in session. You came very briefly for lunch because your schedule was busy, but there David Phillip, the president of this foundation, Ambassador Lodi, and that black congressman, Ellen Wheat, are all coming. So it is, we have this meeting every three months. And again, the major focus is our report, we are both going to Chicago and, uh, to, this, to say, we don't want to let the momentum go. You see, it's, and we have told Mr. Sheikh, and he agrees that at best we have the next six months. If we could somehow put the stamp of internationalism on this whole issue, I think that's our strategy. And, and, and basically, there are many key players working, and I'm just so glad that this foundation is giving us a necessary cover. And as a result, uh, we have a coalition to bring into the thing, too. Well, we get to London. At, at the uh, parliamentarian conference, which we just came from when we arrived here, uh, that's an example right there of the report that came in the news here. Europe's newspaper called the news. I don't yes. The headline. It says Professor Beck, Baker narrates Harun account of Kashmir, and I think it's very moving, and uh, we will have some copies of this. If, if we did not even know this reporter was no. in the audience. The Kashmiri group, Dr. Yub Thakkar, organized this, this, organized this, uh, this uh, meeting, and the way Professor Baker described all this, and uh, it's quite moving. I, I wish everybody would read this. We'll have plenty of copies for you to read this. Uh, and so, uh, basically, and then many in, within America, the information and, and we are meeting with them. on the American scene we have targeted four key people. One is the chief of the Congressional Black Caucus, Alan V. Lee Hamilton who was the chair of the House Forum. Uh, he, couldn't, he couldn't be there that day. However, this is a letter by Lee Hamilton uh, written to Dr. Zakaur Rahman who is his uh, our member and his constituent from uh, 
Jeffersonville, Indiana. And there he says that, uh, uh, that you know, that I'm sorry I couldn't be there. These things are very important. However, my schedule did not permit. And he has invited, he said, I would like a group of you to come to my hometown, Indiana, and give me a briefing. And we have this thing. We want to get this thing scheduled. And, and this is Lee's uh, letter to Zakat. And uh, that's basically our strategy. We want to work with the key congressman through his constituent in his state. Uh, that way, it's away from Washington and it's more personal and you know, we can discuss more things. So uh, basically, uh, the, uh, the momentum is on and we have some key players. I think Martin Sugar Network and Human Rights Foundation. Uh, there are four works by the American intellectuals on this issue and then uh, Baker's time and effort and you know his, uh, I don't know how anybody could pay him back for what he does because he's readily available and he's so effective. He's so effective with, uh, with the members of Congress that I've seen him one on one with uh, And I think his, his inner, inner, you know, he feels, he has a feeling for this commitment. Yes. No, I, 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 I made the statement in my book uh, when I left the valley that as long as I have life in my body, as Allah gives me life, that my voice will be your voice. I said to those Kashmiri brothers the day I left them, because I knew I'd never be back until it's resolved, because India would kill me once they knew if I escaped with all this. Uh, but I told them, I 